we have two Dell laptops that we need to work on. One of them is the Dell Inspiron 15 inch 7559. And we have the Alienware, Dell Alienware, right here. We're gonna start with the Inspiron because Big Boss already disassembled the board. We have it right here. And the board or the laptop does not power on. Now Big Boss said when he plugs in the charging adapter, the adapter goes into protection mode. It stops supplying voltage. When that happens, it's a very good indication that we have a short circuit on the board, and that's why the charger is going into protection mode. It stops supplying voltage. So Big Boss also mentioned that he saw, he noticed a dark spot on the board right over here. I do see a slight dark area here, but that does not mean anything. This area is right next back of the board where the GPU is. So sometimes it's normal for this area to be dark, especially on video cards, but we're gonna have to investigate. Now the power cable plugs in right here. The power flex cable plugs in here. I'm interested on checking those MOSFETs and see if we have a short on those MOSFETs. Do we have any MOSFETs on the back? We do not, the only two MOSFETs I see are right next to the connector here, right there. And let's see. meter in diode mode and we're gonna check to see if we have a short circuit and we do you see we do and we should not have a short circuit here but the second one does have a short circuit all right the one that's closest to the current sense resistor what we're gonna do is inject voltage at the short and we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot because usually when there's a short circuit and you inject voltage something has to get hot on the board and we want to see what that thing is and we're going to inject 1.2 volts at the drain of the MOSFET and see what gets hot on the board one two and three i see heat coming from right over here you see it right here? But it looks like it's coming from back of the board and not from front of the board. And that's why heat looks diffused. Let's try to flip the board while injecting voltage. Let me adjust my ground clamp here. We're going to connect it to the screw hole. And I need to point my probe right at the drain. And we can tell. And right now we can tell we have a draw of about 1.3 amps. And if we look under the thermal camera, what do you see? Right there, you see it? Right there. Just where Big Boss said there's a dark spot on the board. So Big Boss is the one that figured this out. And right now, it looks like the heat spot is coming from right here, the second set of capacitors. Look at this. I see a blown capacitor. This capacitor is probably short into ground. Look at this. You see it? Those caps, they look okay. This one looks blown. You see? Look. Is it short into ground? And yes. And this one is going to short to ground because this is probably connected in parallel. OK. So let's start by removing the capacitor and see what happens. We're going to use our hot tweezers and some help from the hot air station. It's a big cap, just like that. We're gonna throw that cap away. And I just wanna quickly measure to see if we still possibly have a short. Measure in diet mode, and the short is gone. You see, we're no longer getting a beep. Look at this, we're no longer getting a beep like a continuous beep. 
Same here. Same here. Same here. And same here. Now, if you measure the side of the cap, we get a voltage drop of 0 0.4. So we no longer have a short, and that capacitor was causing a short. That's ground right here. And that's 0 0.4 voltage drop. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, perfect. All we have to do is replace the cap. And then I'm going to give it to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And hopefully that fixes the problem, assuming we do not have a GPU or CPU problem. Now let's go back to the MOSFETs here, and we're going to measure and see if we still have a short. Do you still have a short? And no more. 0 0.42 voltage drop. Perfect. Awesome. And I'm out of flux. We're going to use a new syringe. And if you did not already know, we are a major distributor of Amtec Flux. As a matter of fact, we got a letter a few days ago from Amtec, from Inventec, stating, I'm going to post this on the community section of our site. It's a certified letter that came to us from Inventec, and it says, do not believe all the rumors that you see online about Amtec Direct. This is the only real Amtec Flux in the market, and the only reliable source to buy Amtec Flux is not through eBay, not through Amazon, not AliExpress, not Alibaba, nowhere except the names that they have listed on the sheet here. And we are one of them. Now, I looked at the other names to see what type of business they are in. They carry Inventec supplies, but not Amtec Flux. So we are really one of the major distributors of Amtec Flux. I'm going to post this on our community section of YouTube so you can read it. And if you want genuine Amtec Flux, you can log in to northwichfix.com and place your order. And now I'm going to remove the needle that I have here on my syringe and put it on this one. The syringe does come with two needles. We include two needles and we also include the plunger. And that's why we package it with our own syringes so we can give you a free plunger and we can give you two needles. So let me just remove this needle here. And I'm going to throw this away. Just like that. Okay, so that's fresh Amtec Flux. Let's go ahead and finish the job. I just need to clean this needle a bit. I clean it every once in a while so we can remove all that gooey stuff. But it's a needle. You're not going to stick it in your arm. You're just going to use it on a motherboard. So it doesn't really matter. But I like the way a clean needle looks. Do not inject yourself with flux. It's not good. All right, so let's apply solder on those two pads. And now we're going to grab that capacitor from this SMD booklet. It's a capacitor booklet, size 805. And you can find and purchase those booklets off our site. We have all sizes capacitor booklets, 201, 402, 603, 805, 1206. And the same goes for resistors. We're going to grab a 10 microfarad capacitor. And how do I know that? I do not. I'm basing this off my experience working on Asus laptops, where usually it's a 10 microfarad capacitor. If the value is less or more, it's not going to make that much of a difference. We can even leave this capacitor like this off the board, and the laptop will function and work normally. But we're going to replace it. We're going to put a 10 microfarad capacitor. Maybe add some flux to our tweezer here, so we can stick that cap to the tweezer. Just like that. See, that's how the booklet looks like. It's all labeled with the values. And each strip has a lot of capacitors. I do not know how many, maybe 50. Okay. And you can tell I used a lot. And I have all the booklets here all the booklets for resistors, all the booklets for capacitors. And I have my own labels on here, and you can tell the label got old. I can change it, not a problem. Or you can use a silver pen to write on the booklet. We ship it to you already labeled on the outside, but you can use your own labeling. Getting those booklets from China is very challenging because of the actual size of the booklets. 50 booklets will fit a big box that will cost a lot to ship. You still have customs, you still have tax, you still have 
our overhead, credit card fees, the person who's packaging those booklets. A lot of expenses, but we try to make the price right. And we have all those booklets in stock. If you order today, package gets shipped out today. And if you're in California, you will receive it the next day or maybe two days. If you are anywhere in the States, it usually takes between two to three days to get the package. Or if you are international, based on my experience working with UPS and shipping international, it's usually three to five days. Let's go ahead and solder the capacitor. We're gonna use our hot tweezers. And just like that, just let it settle in place. And swipe up or down. Perfect. The cap is soldered on perfectly. Now all we have to do is give this board to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And I'll be back to finish the video, assuming there's nothing else wrong with the board. Okay, I think Big Boss is almost ready with the assembly. He just pulled up on me. And let's see what's going on. Will it turn on? I see a light in the front. That, yeah, that's a good thing. Keyboard lit up. And I see a backlight on the screen. Yes, yes. Very nice. The laptop is on. And that capacitor fixed the laptop. Now I do hear a fan spin, a very loud fan spin. Hmm. Let's see if it's gonna boot up the windows. I do not know if it's normal for those laptops to spin up that loud when it starts up. We do not know what the password is. Oh, the keyboard is not working. Is it working? Can I check? Maybe that's why the fan is spinning high because the keyboard is not detected. Can you check on the keyboard connector? The mouse is working, but the keyboard is not. Our job was to fix no power, but we're gonna have to check and see if the keyboard is connected properly or if the keyboard is what's causing the fan to spin up high. Check on the keyboard connector, is it good? Doesn't look like the keyboard is typing here. What if we press enter? Enter is not working. Big Boss called on me again and he tried an external keyboard and the external keyboard is working. So it looks like the keyboard itself is faulty. And maybe that's why fans are spinning high. Okay, so this keyboard is working. Can you type on that keyboard again? Yeah, that keyboard is working. So at least we know that we have a bad keyboard for this laptop. And that's it, we're gonna end it right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think, leave it down in the comments and we'll do something else in the next video.